and I guess we're live now. Hi guys, um, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome all of you at our today's app uh, audit session. Um, please write something in the chat that you can hear me and see us so we can understand that everything works properly. The chat section is uh, on the right corner of your window. Hi. You may write, where are you from? Like, so we can more uh, like understand our audience um, better. So you can write, where are you from? What is your occupation and what is your product? We will try to do our best to make this session more fruitful for you and more interesting with some insights. Hi, we have Israel with us. Hi, Miriam. So we are still waiting a couple of minutes while uh, some people are still joining us and let us do a brief introduction of ourselves. Uh, my name is Anna and I'm head of consulting department at AppFollow. For those who probably do not familiar what AppFollow is, we are one-step solution for mobile developers and publishers to estimate and manage their uh, apps performance in both app stores. Um, so like including marketing features, reputation management features and analytical features. And today with me is our wonderful colleague and my co-host um, Rish from Yodel Agency. Rish, the floor is yours. Hi everyone. Um, my name is uh, Rishan or Rish for short. I'm a associate growth director here at Yodel Mobile. We are a uh, London based app consultancy um, and we work with apps to help them launch and scale in the app space. So we work uh, across everything from uh, organic growth optimization to paid user acquisition, helping uh, the apps with their strategies. Uh, that includes ASO, of course, as well, which is why I'm here today. Um, great. It is. I'm very glad to have you uh, today with me here. Um, so guys, we have uh, lots of countries actually, uh, London, UK, Czech Republic, India, Israel. So I hope that this session will be interesting for you and to make it even more um, important and more interesting, just like feel free to ask all the questions inside the chat section. We will definitely uh, cover them up either during our discussion or at the end. And just like a, a, a quick introduction and brief agenda of our session, how, it's, uh, how it will go on. So um, as usual, we have the list of applications that were submitted during the registration. So we will pick them um, using Google Randomizer. So to make this process more transparent and more honest, and we will audit these applications in live. So um, this is like kind of um, unpredictable choices we will uh, make. So if your application is not picked by like some like couple of minutes, you may um, write the link of the applications inside the chat. We will definitely uh, pick one, two or three applications at the end of our sec session inside uh, from the chat. So please stay with us and like enjoy the session. And like we're here to make it um, like interesting for you. So um, as a start, me and Rish picked up two applications from this list, each of, um, each of us picked one, and prepared a bit detailed analysis of this application and like to, to just like cover more points that we can do uh, comparing with this live stuff uh, and looking at the store page on the website. So uh, we would start with these two applications and then we will go with this randomizer thing. Um, yeah, I see already a uh, couple of links in the chat, uh, guys. Being flooded with apps to review, which is great. Yeah, so um, Rich, probably you will start. Sure, um, I will share my screen. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope everyone can see this. So can I just confirm that you can see it? Yeah, yeah. OK, Hold is it just me or is it flickering? Um, a little bit. Uh, I see the, 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 the bottom panel, but yeah, right. now it's done. There we go. All right. Yep. Okay. Uh, so the, the app I picked, um, it's a uh, phone cleaner uh, or booster. I'm not sure if you've come across this, Anna, in the past, um, but these apps are great to allow you to boost the performance of your mobile phone. Um, so in this case, Phone Keeper, um, cleaner and booster by MBZ Co. Limited. Um, 
and, and just to begin, I guess uh, I like to kind of look at it from two different angles. One is from a discoverability point of view. How discoverable is the app on the app stores? Uh, and then from a conversion point of view, uh, how effective is it at converting those users who land on the app store listing into a download? So, I mean, App Follow is a great platform which allows you to get all the key metrics and understand your app from a top line perspective. Here in the overview section, we can see that the app title uh, on, on the Play Store, um, you can use up to 50 characters. And currently, the app is using 31 out of 50 characters. So um, that the title is very important for keyword optimization uh, because you get indexed for those keywords in your title. Um, and I think in this case, this is a great opportunity uh, whereby the developer can include more high value keywords in the title um, to increase that discoverability on the Play Store. Um, so including more uh, keywords that are relevant to the app, um, it's going to be very important. Um, if we, having looked at the store performance index, it says that at about 62% you're currently at the search performance. So that would indicate that there is a bit more work to do here uh, and that we can really try and figure out using the platform what keywords are very relevant for the app, how competitive they are and how much traffic they drive, and then trying to include those in the title. Uh, and I'll get into keywords in just a moment. Um, another field here is the short description. Um, they've used 73 out of 80 characters. Again, there's, there's seven characters left, which again can help to plug in maybe one or maybe sometimes two useful keywords. Um, and again, the short description, same as the title, gets indexed by the algorithm. So making use of these two copy elements is going to be very important for the app to be indexed by the algorithm and for you to rank for important keywords. So when users are searching, they get to discover the app. Um, just going into the description, which is uh, also a key uh, text field um, on the Google Play Store. Now, if I expand this, um, you can see there's, um, there's about 3,700 characters, uh, a lot of text, and um, a lot of icons. Now, I think using icons is, uh, first of all, a great way to uh, grab the user's attention. Um, what I think uh, is that there could be a bit more work done on the um, formatting. Unlike the App Store, the Google Play Store allows you to do some rich formatting, it allows you to do spaces. You can bold certain titles uh, and including those uh, formatting tags in your copy um, can help the certain key elements of your description to stand out. Um, I think right now, Maybe uh, it's a bit overwhelming for a reader, uh, and sometimes some of the key points or value propositions might not really stand out as effectively. Um, so certainly the formatting, the spacing could be slightly improved. Um, and I think it's worth A-B a testing using Play Store experiments, maybe a copy version with fewer icons uh, and with more sort of formatting or clearer text uh, and maybe trying out different descriptions uh, to see which one drives the best improvement in conversion rate. That, that will be a very easy way um, to start testing which description is helping to convert the users. Um, lastly, uh, from a keyword perspective and discoverability perspective, the main description also gets indexed by the Google Play Store algorithm. So including keywords in the main description uh, has shown to help apps rank for uh, terms, search terms. And uh, uh, typically, uh, we would recommend that um, apps utilize uh, sort of the top portion of the Play Store description to optimize for keywords. And the way you would do it is through a bit more repetition of important keywords. So in, in, this, in, in this app's case, for example, we know that they placed emphasis in the title for cleaner and booster. Uh, and similarly, we could try and include a few more keywords that are relevant in, in the top part of the description. So around sort of boosting memory performance, cleaning junk, 
um, you know, optimizing the RAM or the memory. Um, those are important keywords to try and repeat a bit more often in the main description so that the algorithm indexes you for those keywords. Um, let me just like step in quickly and uh, remember that a b testing for example for the full description is a good way to increase your overall indexing like um, amount of a number of uh, keywords that will be indexed because uh, in google play those versions th those variants um, that you include for example as a bsc also influence on your rankings so this is also a good way not only to test uh, and improve and boost your conversion but also to improve your rankings and positions Absolutely, yeah. So just including 10 more keywords per variant would mean that if you have three variants, you have 30 more keywords that you index for. So that's really sure. useful. So, um, I mean, going on to then, I suppose, uh, just from a um, keywords perspective, still sticking with the keywords, I think this is an area the, the app should focus in order to improve the app store visibility. Uh, and just looking at the keywords, I've, I've done a bit of, I dropped a few keywords in here that I thought would be relevant. So Phonekeeper is the brand name, um, and we can see that they rank at number one for it, which is obviously very good. Um, however, it might not be the most common way for people to search for this app. Um, people might search like Boost Memory or Memory Cleaner, Memory Saver, Phone Cleaner. And for a lot of these keywords, there's currently not uh, the app is currently not ranking, although some of these keywords are integrated into the name or the short description. You can see that here. So uh, my recommendation will be to uh, use uh, use these fields, the title and the subtitle, to integrate these keywords more often and also into the main description and, and do this periodically um, so that we can, uh, so that the algorithm can index the app uh, regularly and over time the app will start to rank for those keywords hopefully um, typically it's good it's a good way of a good way to do this is to find keywords that have a high search volume or popularity in this case um, and you can see that by these numbers here that show you how how much how popular certain keywords are and um, how much um, traffic they drive to that Great, and there is a nice question in the chat um, from Annie. How can I understand which keywords are relevant for my app and if we are a cross-genre application? Rich, how do you think, how we can help Annie? Um, so if I'm not mistaken, by cross-genre, it's between two different categories. Uh, Annie, maybe this is something you can confirm. So sometimes apps sit in between two categories. Um, Correct. Okay. So I think that that's a good, it's a very good question because there are a lot of cross genre apps. And I think one way to approach this is to look at how your uh, competitors uh, for each type of genre, uh, what kind of keywords they're utilizing. I think using an ASO tool like AppFollow is a great way to understand your competition also. And um, if you have App, uh, uh, maybe a couple of competitors for one of the genres and then a couple of competitors for the other genre, you can start to see which keywords they are using um, and understand what they're optimizing for. And you can build out your own sort of custom keyword bank. Now, some keywords will have more popularity than other, uh, and that will help you to then slowly prioritize which ones you should aim for. Um, ultimately, though, I think it depends how users search and that's kind of understanding how like what the psychology is when it comes to searching for your app so it, it, sometimes you just have to think from a, a user's perspective when they go to the app store okay what is it that they would type in to try and find an app and that's usually also one of the best ways to go about identifying keywords that are relevant it's just thinking well if i'm looking for a service like this cross genre app that you mentioned um what is it that I would search for? And often the way you search on Google, on your website, or on desktop, is not the same way you would search on the App Store. Uh, App Store searches tend to be um, certainly a bit more long tail. And there's a couple of words usually included. People don't just search for one word. 
uh, but for a number of words. Uh, and then a great tool also you can use is the autocomplete feature that Apple and Google often provide. So as you start to type, it will start to auto-populate some popular search results. And in that auto auto complete, you tend to find some additional keywords that might be relevant for you. And, and you can note those down if it does correlate with the cross genre app that you're talking about, of course. I hope yeah, that. definitely. And also using these suggests that's uh, offered by, uh, by by the stores, but like using the relevant or irrelevant keywords, it's always a balance and finding this, uh, the gold niche for your application specifically. But um, I totally agree with the um, British points of view and also uh, would recommend you to um, try out uh, like different parts of this keywords, I mean like different genres and different themes and understand which keywords brings you really um, like convertible traffic, which um, which you can use uh, further in, in your application. Absolutely. Um, so keywords aside, I think another, so for phone keeper, um, I think in general, there's, uh, there's some keyword optimization required to help it become more so, uh, visible in the app stores. Uh, the other key element is once the user finds the app, ensuring that they convert into a download or an install. Um, in this case, uh, one of the key elements that would be uh, impacting this, uh, certainly um, the title is important, uh, and that should also uh, communicate the app's key value propositions. The icon can often also be an intriguing factor because when you are in the search results, so you've searched for uh, phone cleaner and you get all these apps uh, for phone cleaner, the icon has to stand out and it has to um, intrigue the user to click on that search result. So in this case, I think what, something that's quite interesting is that they've used the Android icon, the Android, uh, little Android inside the icon, which kind of shows that this app is specifically for Androids, built for Androids and then on the Google Play Store. And, and rightly so, and it's got a broomstick to sort of emphasize the cleaning. So I think in that sense, the colors uh, and, and the use of the icons is quite nice. Um, I, I've not looked at the entire competition, although we can see on the right hand side here, similar apps, a lot of them use the sort of the sweeping broom um, to kind of talk about cleaning. Um, a lot of them tend to use greens and blue colors, which is quite interesting as well. Um, but I would say it does it does sort of stand out with the with the little Android icon, which is quite nice. Um, again, icons is something that is worth testing on Google because you can use Place to experiments to test different icons. So, testing different color variations uh, is certainly a key thing. I would also recommend. Um, some apps, depending on the size of the business and the brand, of course, they restrict testing icons. Um, however, if you can test icons, and uh, especially with seasonalities and the changing seasons and uh, events like Christmas, Halloween, we see a lot of games adapting the strategy, but they test different icons and they make it a bit more themed depending on the season. And, and uh, my general recommendation would be to not shy away from showing users that you are staying on top of the seasons. You're constantly updating and you're in tune with how things are changing. Um, so that's a good way also to stand out, I think. Going on to the next important assets, I think uh, in this case will be App Store videos and screenshots. Now, um, if I'm not mistaken, and I'll check the Play Store listing here, there is no, um, there's no video currently implemented for the app. Um, however, there are screenshots. Um, right off the bat, we can see that they're using currently five uh, screenshots on Android. Um, the allocation on Android is eight, so you can use up to eight screenshots. And I would recommend that you use all of those eight slots if you can to showcase your app's value propositions. Uh, I think that's a very easy thing to do. Um, just highlighting all the different value propositions. It's just an extra sell that you're doing to the user to convince them of why they should download the app. Um, so, uh, but looking at the aesthetics, I, li I like the fact they have big 
uh, bold letters. Um, it, it's very punchy. The, the captions are quite nice. Um, in terms of the actual uh, I, uh, the actual phones and the imagery, I think there, there could be a, a bit of optimization there. Certainly, it's difficult to see the app's UI. Um, the, the, the real emphasis is on the graphic, uh, like the rocket or the ice cubes, which fall in line with the, with the title. But sometimes maybe the user might be interested in seeing a bit more of the actual app's UI. This is something worth testing, of course. There's, when it comes to creatives, it's often very subjective. What I like might not be the thing that performs the best. So again, using Play Store experiments, you can test this. Uh, and um, you can look at maybe showing a bit more of the app's UI could help to improve conversions. Um, there's a question in the chat. Uh, are those screenshots okay for Apple? Isn't it violating their requirements? Um, uh, to an extent, yes, you're right. Um, Apple is a lot more stricter when it comes to uh, screenshots. The guidelines are a little bit, uh, I guess, looser on the Apple side of things. And I'm not sure what your experience is with this, but we've uh, we've in the past seen Google to be uh, giving a lot more, a, a bit more creative freedom to the developers compared to Apple, who strictly want you to showcase the app's user interface um, to a degree. Yeah, totally true. And Apple is uh, way more strict than Google, even like if we're speaking about the screenshots and for the video, there are lots of requirements that you should, um, like you should be guided to. Uh, for example, you, uh, are not allowed to use the real people on the screenshots because it's uh, something that is restricted by Apple. Uh, actually, you do not um, like allow to use any um, other stuff except the real interface and the real UI uh, of the application. But there are some cases that um, like Apple reviewers are more how to say like uh, blinded to these kind of things, and we of course see in the App Store some um, these like violations, but. Uh, actually, it depends uh, by, by the case. Officially, it's not uh, allowed to use anything except the UI and bright captures and slogans. Cool. Um, I think, I, I mean, I'm coming to the end of my sort of mini audit, but um, the last thing I just wanted to point the attention to are the reviews. Um, I think on the review side of things, we can see that um, there are the featured review replies, which the developer has uh, and there are six on the Play Store, and out of the six, they have replied to five of those reviews. So when users land on the App Store listing, they can see that the developer has responded to them, and that's always a very good thing. Um, and in terms of boosting the overall average rating, um, I think there are two elements. One, certainly address uh, any negative reviews, even if they are not featured, so that you can um, show to the to the user that you've taken on their concern and you've listened to them and you've changed things so uh, and maybe even asking them to um, leave uh, uh, update the review if those if their problems have been resolved I think that's always a good way to show sort of customer service certainly uh, and to show that you care about their opinion the other one would be certainly to look into the implementation of a, a rating and review uh, strategy now this is this is strictly speaking something more product related as opposed to with ASO, uh, but it's about maximizing I guess positive reviews whilst minimizing negative reviews being left on the App Store. True. So, um, Rich, thank you for this um, quite detailed analysis of this application. I hope that the person who submitted this app for the review will enjoy it, and. Um, let me move forward to, um, to to the application that I picked up for the uh, this started review, and I will make it short, just like to save more time for our live um, picker. So um, what I have picked up here is the uh, game uh, which is connected to Man in Black, and. Uh, Going back to the questions regarding to the question that was asked regarding the relevance of the keywords, so this is a perfect example of um, like this situation uh, when we cannot 
identify which que which uh, keywords will perform in this case. Because, for example, this game currently we're looking at Google Play and United States uh, store listing has a three main parts. So first of all, it's um, theme part. So this is connected to the man in black. So probably there are a pool of keywords that would be connected to this uh, theme itself. For example, man in black, some other uh, keywords which related to the uh, name of this movie, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The second part, um, which can be also an idea for um, looking for, for this uh, keyword semantic core, is the functions. So, as we can see here, the AR means actually um, the feature of this application. So, probably there are a pool of people who are looking for the AR applications, and doesn't matter what genre and what uh, theme they are uh, about. So, probably there are pool of keywords that you can use regarding this um, artificial reality uh, stuff. So this is also um, a, like a way how you can um, improve your semantic core. And of course, the last thing here, this can be a big contribution of this, uh, of, of the uh, process of keyword research is the genre. So RPG is a huge genre, uh, which is probably quite kind of tough for the competition, but also it should be definitely taken into account while you are optimizing your application. Um, so this is just like a, a quick overview of um, and the answer on the question was asked. Was asked. So I will not uh, focus more on on um, uh, this keyword stuff, uh, particularly in this application. So just like to make it brief, um, as Rich um, said, we have at App Follow the Store Performance Index, which basically means how well your app is doing in the particular country in the particular store. So we divided this. Uh, figure into three blocks. And first of all, of course, it is something that connected to the uh, text optimization, text metadata, and search visibility performance, uh, which also included the um, uh, capacity and how you use the um, things that offer that, that is offered by uh, Apple and Google. So in terms of the characters, for example, and of course, the main part of this um, score is the search visibility. So basically, it means how easy um, it is how how easy it is find your application in a particular store. I will focus on it a bit uh, later. Uh, the second part um, is the rating and reviews performance. Actually, um, this is like rating is something that is uh, coming and becoming more important day by day. So, for example, if uh, like a year ago, average rating was just a thing that was influenced on the conversion rate because like there are a pool of applications uh, with different ratings, and of course, users will choose those apps um, that would have higher average rating. But now we see the trend that uh, both Apple and Google uh, taking into account this average rating in terms of the uh, app performance overall. So for example, there are different, like actually two benchmarks of the average rating in Google. And if you are a lucky one, you already an Android user, you already can spot it this um, custom filter that Google um, AB testing now in some Android phones, which basically splits the uh, search into two tabs, uh, apps with average rating 4.0 and apps and, and above and apps with the rating 4.5 and above. So this is kind of, it's not official information, but this is something that we are, um, that we spotted um, like in, in the store. These are benchmarks. And if your application um, average rating is lower than the, the, this benchmark, you will be, um, um, probably decreased in the search um, in, in the search indexing process overall. So we uh, actually saw some cases with our clients where um, unsuccessful update dropped the rating and with the average rating, the installs and uh, keywords position was also dropped. So this is something that becoming more important, uh, not only in terms of the conversion rate, but also something that influence on the, on them uh, product uh, overall. And the also important thing here is that um, we uh, see that the last update of this application was quite a long time ago and the best practice to update your application so the stores um, understand that your app is alive and it's, uh, it's it's still working. Like the best practice is to update your application at least one time per three months. But of course, usually um, like one time per month is the kind of the best um, update if you have the resources. But this is also a very important stuff if 
if you want to get high ranks. And of course, category chart rankings, this is something that uh, have a direct contribution to your browse traffic. And especially if we're speaking about the games um, and like this um, games category, the browse traffic is far more important than search traffic because like uh, there are a lot of chart rankings and uh, featuring and stuff. So uh, usually the, 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 the number of uh, installs that are coming from browse are higher. So the uh, categories and chart rankings will help your application be more visible and attract more installs for your app. Um, also, like speaking about the screenshots, et cetera, this is something uh, that can be discussed uh, for a very long time because this is the pool the, the huge space for a b testing and just like my suggestion uh especially for for this game where there are lots of categories in this man and black world a b test icons screenshots and um as we can see here we have a video probably a b test uh the the video thing option as well um so this is like something which which should be um as a as a constant work and like the one thing I want to highlight here for for the for this application is um, the proportion of keywords that uh, contribute in the traffic. So sometimes uh, you cannot understand which keywords bring real traffic or uh, which keywords just like you have a, a higher positions, but you don't um, have any installs coming from them. The um, keyword intelligence instrument shows you. Um, currently we see in the percentage, but if we uh, set up an in integration with the console, we see the real figures, how many installs you get um, keyword by keyword. So this is also a pool of insights that you can implement in your ASO strategy, like if we're speaking about the text updates. So my suggestion here is optimizing wisely and definitely make data-driven decisions according to all um, like sources that we have, uh, especially if you are doing them uh text optimization um so as soon as we are um like we have uh not, not not that much time by now i suggest uh to go to our uh randomizing picker rich what do you think yeah let's go for it great so we, here we have uh, the list of applications that were submitted and here i have the um, google randomizer so let us generate the random figure and pick up the application that we will see Eight. So, Rish, probably you will start with with, with the Audi this application number eight. Okay. So, application number eight is the. It's an Apple app called La Coqueta, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Probably. Will you share the screen? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Just one second. While I was uh, sharing the screen, I just like review the questions that are in the chat section. Uh, do rating affect ASO? Yes, but not the ASO as uh, like as an app store optimization process, but your your app performance. But definitely yes. Um, and there is one big question from Lucas. Um, I will review it now. Mm -mm -mm. Rich, we can see your screen. Lucas, we will, I will review your question and we will um, answer it a bit later. Mm -hmm. Great. I mean, we can see that um, this app is currently, uh, or this particular listing is currently set for the Bulgarian app store. Um, mm -hmm. Although we are set to the Bulgarian, uh, all the localization currently is in English, um, including the yeah probably we will switch to the uh, um, uh, if the person who submitted this application is uh, with us now please let us know but i think that's uh, like according to the number of ratings i think bulgaria is not the, the main market probably you can try the us or the uh, uk one like sure. just to under to make this analysis more um, interesting for for the person um no, nope, not the US, and let us try the United Kingdom then. And if not, we will uh, take a look at the Bulgarian version. Nope. Nope. Um, okay, then. We tried to find uh, the, the, the necessary market. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, so uh, we'll stick to Great Britain for now then? Uh, or you can turn up like back to the Bulgarian one. Probably uh, it is the, the main market for them. Sure. Uh, let's put it back to... There we go. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Um, great. Okay. So I, I mean, I've, in, in the background, I've added it also to the app follow platform. So we've got it here as well. Um, so I, I guess just to start off, um, it seems like an artificial intelligence powered uh, outfit planner. So it allows you to, and there's a great video here as well, it allows you to plan what you should be wearing based on uh, the type of fashion that you're interested in. And that also allows you to build out your dream closet uh, and get various design uh, style ideas and things like that. So in that sense, it's a, it seems to be a quite f a female focused, I suppose, even the colors and the branding, uh, it seems to be targeting more of the female audience. Uh, this is not to say that I guess men also have a bit of fashion interest. Um, but uh, certainly with the icon, I think this is very interesting. There's a, the, the, uh, there's a feminine sort of silhouette outline with a question mark kind of forming that shape. So maybe it's sort of helping females or if, uh, if there are women who uh, you know have a question about their outfit or what they should be wearing, then this is yeah. the outfit. So I think it's very clever the way they've done it. Um, and I, I think similarly to my previous suggestion, again, with um, with icons, um, w w sometimes this I the icon can be very sort of, it can capture users uh, interest and audience. Uh, so again, testing the icons will be uh, quite beneficial. Um, there was a question earlier on about testing on the uh, App Store uh, and um, or testing creative elements on the App Store. Uh, and just to address that, there is no um, native way of testing on the App Store uh, on Apple, like in Google Play. Um, there are third party platforms that allow you to test um, uh, things like icons and screenshots, but these are typically paid solutions and uh, you are required to drive um, some sort of third party traffic to those dummy, dummy App Stores um, so that you can test the effectiveness of your variants. Um, so, I mean, just switching to app follow then really quickly, what we've got here is again, from a review perspective, I think this is the bit that stood out to me. Um, it's currently at a 3.5 star uh, with a three reviews. Uh, it's set to the US currently. Um, if we toggle back to Bulgaria, it's on a five star with 24 ratings. So maybe, uh, maybe there, there, there's a, a review related thing that we need to consider here but certainly from a review perspective i think here um again with the reviews that they have um they need to try and uh, respond to those reviews if possible just to the featured ones but also address any uh, even if it's positive just thanking those users and staying in tune uh with the reviews is very it's a good practice um from a keyword perspective, I think this is also very interesting. Uh, I believe the titles are the same. So um, on the App Store front, um, they're you making good use of all the characters, which is great. Um, one thing to notice with the subtitle though, um, the last character of the subtitle for whatever reason uh, means that it's not indexed and as a result, the last word of the subtitle, in this case, it will be closet, uh, will not be indexed by Apple. It's, it's a weird bug, but the recommendation here will be for any app, if they're using a subtitle, to target 29 characters instead of 30. Um, and this way, um, you will be able to make sure that all of the words that you include in your subtitle will be indexed uh, and you will get to rank for it right now. Um, we can do this test again. Um, this is on the fly, so don't judge me. But theoretically, the app should not be ranking for closet, um, or should not be indexed for closet, um, which may or may not be the case. If it isn't, I'm very sorry. Um, 
yeah, there are like some uh, options that we can skip, I, I, I think. But it is important to also mention that in App Store, there are support locals that are kind of offered by the App Store. So for example, if we're speaking about the Bulgarian market, um, these guys uh, can also use the United uh, Kingdom localization to improve and boost the performance in the Bulgarian market while optimizing this local. So because in the App Store, that there is a logic with cross-indexing uh, locals. The full list you can find in the internet or in, in any resources. The main thing is that the U UK uh, localization is working almost worldwide. So do not forget to uh, increase your chances to get higher ranks uh, in terms of the keyword position and use all this localization. Yeah. Um, so going down to the screenshots, um, we can see that they have used um, eight out of the available 10 screenshots, um, which again, is, is it's good. Um, on Apple, you are able to use 10 in total. Uh, and I think similarly to um, the previous example, utilizing, making use of all the different um, screenshot slots is uh, recommended so that you can um, promote all the different value propositions of the app. Even if the la even if you run out of value propositions, just having the last screenshot maybe with a call to action can sometimes help. Something like download the app now even. At least utilizing those uh, screenshot slots uh, is, is a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. Looking at, I, I guess, the from a rating and review perspective, we, we spoke about the Bulgarian market. Um, the, 24 ratings is it's a great start and i think the the app could do uh, implement some strategies to drive more ratings and reviews um certainly the initial reviews are very positive so uh, perhaps users are going to find this app quite useful and are going to review it very well um, it's a great start so just encouraging the rating and reviews um, it will be a, a good strategy to, it will not only, as you mentioned, Anna, improve the algorithm and the effectiveness of the discoverability, um, but it will also be a key factor to convince users to download the app. A lot of users like to read reviews and reviews play an important factor when it comes to decision making. So um, yeah, driving those review numbers up, uh, it will be um, beneficial. Yeah, but also uh, it's important to mention here to use only native uh, solutions that offered by Apple and Google because other ways are restricted. They were allowed um, like se several months ago, but now no. So if you want to implement this uh, rating prompt um, request, use uh, the solutions that offered by the consoles, by, by Apple and Google. Yeah. Um just looking at the description, I think um, I, I like the way they've started out the description. Uh, certainly, the above the fold text, which is usually the initial part, I think it's it's very sort of uh, it catches your attention. Um, the first line starts out very strong: mix and match outfits in a snap with the new uh, La Coqueta daily outfit planner app. Um, Unlike the Play Store, the main description on the App Store, we've uh, not seen evidence of it being indexed, but they've, I think they've done a very good job to space it out uh, and add sort of bold titles to really you know, help the user with the readability elements. Um, I would say that because um, we're looking at this on a big screen, when you actually look at it on a smaller screen, uh, and unfortunately my my uh, uh, preview tool is not showing up. I can try and refresh this. But when you look at it on a smaller screen, um, that text can appear quite long. So one suggestion would be, as you as you scroll down and you look at the text, I, it's not rendering correctly here, but as as is to try and see how it actually looks on the device. Uh, and I would recommend looking at perhaps your own iPhone device or different sizes and, and just see how much reading there is for users and whether or not it feels too much. Sometimes a lot of text can be off-putting and it can sometimes distract the user from the from understanding the key points. Um, mm -hmm. Currently, what we're seeing is that the description here uses almost all 4,000 characters. 
um, the limit is 4,000, they're using 3,900. So again, that in itself is, is quite a lot of copy to for a user to read. So um, again, looking at ways maybe to streamline it, maybe to highlight the key value propositions uh, and extracting the key points could be uh, beneficial for the user. Agree, and also, unfortunately, not all the users um, are even um, going deeper in this uh, full description. So, it is probably more th more important for the Google Play, where the full description is indexed by, but, but for the App Store, is quite um, a doubtful work, as as I can see uh, actually here. It, like to to have the so so many characters, so many uh, like the very long description. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, overall, I think the certainly the, on the on the screenshot side of things, there there is a video in place, um, which is great. And I think from a screenshot perspective, they it feels very on brand and consistent brand, uh, or having consistency across sort of your icon and your screenshots and making it feel consistent is it, quite is quite good. I think um, it, it gives the user also and understanding that this is a, a properly well thought out brand and a, a solution. And um, I, I like the fact that these screenshots are sort of flowing. The first couple of screenshots always tend to be where the user's attention is grabbed. Um, there, there is a bit of a, an alignment related situation here, which perhaps on the App Store is not as much, um, but uh, little things like this you could be adjusting to just make sure that the screenshots are aligned if they if you are using flowing screenshots that's something to be aware of yeah and the composition looks actually very nice and catchy you want to go and list the screenshots further that's a nice tactic correct um, okay, so probably shall we move to the uh, to the next uh, application yes let's so uh, let me generate the next application, which is number 35. We are going to our list and looking uh, on the application that were submitted by Greta. Greta, if you are here, please feel free to say us. <laughs> um, so this is the Plex um, application, which is actually the next uh, one more app regarding the streaming free movies and shows, as I can see now. And actually, th there was a question in the chat uh, regarding this um, uh, phone on, 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 on the corner. This is the Storm Oven uh, extension, actually a very uh, useful stuff if you are like want to uh, switch, for example, the localizations and easily check uh, what what is uh, going on on the um, other um, like store listings. But there are also some ways how to do this via um changing these parameters in the web so there are different ways how you can switch um to the necessary store listing page so we see here that we have the us market now and um like in terms of the graphic i think it's very bright and uh actually it has some um like ui interface um, elements so which is good for this kind of application because you can easily implement some popular uh, content on the screenshots and actually like go into this um, graphic suggestions uh, from, from the first glance. Um, this is a very good way how you can A-B test your, um, your app for different regions with uh, implementing these different uh, content, um, like taking into account the region. So for example, if we're looking in the US market, you should definitely uh, know that uh, some Mm, probably movies or some uh, series are more popular now than the others and use this tactic inside your graphic um, ASO just like to boost your conversion and this is actually a very nice way how you can uh, interact with the conversion rate optimization so this is like um, the first suggestion that I will recommend here but actually um, Rich what do you think about the graphic I think it's uh, kind of uh, bright and it has like all these key features are highlighted uh, with them like with the um, big phones so this is a good tactic to show uh, users from the first glance like while they're scrolling the applications what your application has and this is a very nice uh, move but i have some doubts regarding the uh the second string because it's 
um, it it's actually shows us how many movies and how many shows it has, for example, here, but it's too small. So um, the, the tactic is very nice, but probably you can also increase a bit this, uh, the second string so you can uh, show the users uh, like how many contents you have inside your application. Rich, what do you, say, uh, what do you think about the graphic uh, of, of this application? Yeah, I think um, what I like about it is the fact that the background is the part that's flowing across. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's, uh, it takes, it's actually the shape of the, the Plex icon. So it's like an arrow, but mm -hmm. they're just different color arrows that are kind of guiding the user from screenshot to screenshot. Uh, I'd have to agree with you, Anna. I think the, the second line of the, the, the caption, um, the, low, the smaller part, um, might be getting lost in the bright colors uh, that they use. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I mean, there's easy ways of helping that stand out. You could either give the 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 small um, the the small caption a uh, a bit of shadowing, a, a bit of a shadow, or uh, maybe a, a different color background altogether. Um, or you could look at um, potentially dimming the brightness of those um, of the background itself, so it it helps the copy stand out a little bit more. Um, there are lots of ways about it, and again, it's it's a great use case for just small changes like this to just have a test running to see if it makes a difference to your mm -hmm. conversion rate. Um, sure. I, th I think also what what Plex does really well is it's got a bold statement like stream, mm -hmm. and then it's got a, a bit more of a description in terms of okay, what are you what can you stream? Well, there's fourteen thousand movies and shows, and I think. That that as is a is a strong value proposition in itself, um, and uh, the, we they should look to find a way to, to maybe highlight this a little bit more clearly. Um, th there are things obviously we've got live TV, we have movies, um, mm -hmm. your media. So there's a lot of different value propositions. Um, it's really good to see that they've made use of uh, the available screenshots. Um, I've worked with uh, similar apps in the past, and uh, something that we felt works really well is to also, uh, and again, this is subject to testing, but highlighting certain UI elements to that fall in line with sometimes the caption that you're using, um, certainly with um, uh, services that allow you to stream um, and live TV and things like that. Um, the, there's a lot of emphasis placed on the UI because of the size of the screen. Um, so there's there's things you can work with. You can highlight certain pieces of the UI if you wanted to, to direct the user's attention. Um, you could also, and this is quite important from a localization standpoint, make sure that the content that you demonstrate inside the screen grabs is relevant to the geos that you're talking about. So. We're currently in the US, I believe. So obviously there are having US focused live TV channels, US focused movies that you can stream is very useful. But if Plex is available in another country like uh, say Germany, then you could have German specific channels, German specific shows and movies uh, just to make it a bit more relevant for the, um, for the different markets it's available in. Yeah, true. And like, as I always um, like to say, uh, the localization is not only about the text translations, like for example, the captions, etc. It's more about the adaptation of the graphic of the text. So um, like it, it's the only working strategy to uh, adapt your application for all your key markets, including this um, content uh, and like some other stuff. Uh, which is relevant, particular to this um, to this region, and of course, like the translation of the of the of, of other materials. Um, yep, um, actually, like speaking about the like couple of words about the text optimization um, here in the app, uh, like in the app name, we see actually the same um, words, like the same keywords that we see on the um, on the screenshot. So probably this is a good tactic to make. Um, the product page um, look like as a as a one whole page, but probably uh, there are ways uh, how you can improve your, um, for example, the the short description. Uh, while I'm while I'm speaking about this, there there, there was a, a hypothesis that 
the captions from the graphic assets, from the icons and from the screenshots are also supported by Google. Only Google, we're speaking about the, not, not about Apple. And also uh, these keywords, like these captions are indexed in the store. So this is not, uh, this is something that is not um, 100 percent uh, like um, sure, but th there were some cases, and we saw that uh, sometimes the things that you use in the in the graphic assets can be and may be indexed. So probably, uh, if there are some other keywords that you uh, can use, for example, in the screenshots. Actually, I totally agree with the reach uh, that stream may be uh, kind of like misleading as a first screenshot. So you you definitely uh, should take a look at some like other keywords and focus probably on on one uh, on one area and like the one thing it's not the also the brand new um, news um, the free word is uh, restrictly forbidden in the app store so guys if you use this tactic in the Google Play which is um, like which is allowed by now, do not use free uh, keywords in the App Store. It is very important. Like we won't check uh, the application in the App Store now, but just in case, mm -hmm. it's a uh, very important thing. If, um, I, okay. if I can mm -hmm. share my screen really quickly, just on Plex, Anna. Um, sure. I, was, um, I was actually looking at uh, one of the areas where I think Plex might be being impacted by the algorithm obviously it's a very big app it's it's well known and it's got a lot of ratings and reviews um but i think those is this is also an area where they they could be doing a bit more improvement um just looking at this uh, very top line um we've got the average ratings by featured reviews so these are the reviews that are visible obviously that that's on the lower end of things. And if that's what's visible to your users, the best thing that you can do is making sure that you also reply to those reviews and make sure that there is um, some sort of communication done so that you, uh, if it's a new user, they can see that the developers on it, uh, the brand is responding to those users and uh, it's taking care of any negative concerns. Um, the last thing again is again, if you, given the size and the scale of this app, um, and it's probably driving a high volume to uh, its app through maybe even paid marketing, uh, it's a good, it's a, that's a good opportunity to drive positive ratings uh, through a, a rating strategy. Um, so whether that's on iOS or on Android, um, having a system in place to drive positive ratings and reviews will be, will be very beneficial for an app like this because I mean, it, it's doing, it's optimizing for keywords. Um, you know, it's it's utilizing all the character elements very well. Um, it's got a very high number of total rank keywords according to App Follow, which is great. Um, and so it's certainly on the ratings and review side, it could do, it has some opportunity to further improve. True, and like guys, uh, replying on reviews really does work because uh, users are, um like have an intent to change the rating and like we have different cases it's officially published so if you are interested in this topic uh you may find it in the internet or ask uh, either of us to share more details regarding this topic um so we are a bit running out of time i suggest to pick up the application from the chat there were two links submitted um we can um we, we, we can take any of it. So, for example, the application that was submitted by, by Miriam, it's um, Anna Business uh, Account and Tax. Um, nice application, not, not, not only because my name is Anna as well. Um, I think, yay, Miriam is still with us. So, Rish, let us uh, give some suggestions how, um, like, what, what app is performing now and how, like, what are the areas uh, we should like maybe improve. So uh, Miriam is your the main domestic uh, market is Great Britain because now we are observing the United um, Kingdom. If not, please write something in the chat that like we can switch on on uh, any of it. Um, yeah, okay, it's uh, UK only. So what we can see on the um, on the store page once again here is the small version like what a user actually see in the product page view and the icon i can understand that this is a brand but the application is about um the like the business account um like sphere it's it's um, it is something that um should 
uh, should be like connecting with invoicing or the banking stuff. So probably there are some different um, signs how you can mark that your application uh, is connected to this sphere. So for example, we can keep and save this as a brand, but also use a small icon of, uh, for example, the bank or the invoice sign, which I actually I saw some competitors like some uh, some apps uh, con connecting to this sphere are using. Uh, so as Rich uh, said at the beginning of our session, while uh, he was observing the application which is connected to the phone cleaner, using the small elements such as um, like icons or uh, figures may um, clearly show users what application is about on the first glance. And like this is just a one suggestion. And uh, speaking about first two screenshots, actually, while we're searching, we can see the first three screenshots. So um, like some something like uh, this field is uh, visible in, in the search. And what I can say like straight away here is that the text here is very, uh, it, it uses very small fonts. So probably not all the people can stop and like some, spend some time to look at this um, information here but probably if you if you will highlight some key benefits of your application in more bigger way in more um, like call to action slogans it will be much easier for user to understand from the first glance what your application is about rich what do you think yeah no i agree i think um certainly obviously the first two screenshots it's the emphasis is placed because as you can see in the preview um those are the first two screens that you tend to see. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and um, I think just the copy, um, from a copy perspective, it might be, whilst it is readable, it, especially if you're talking Apple, um, when someone searches for things like, um, uh, uh, I, guess, I guess like business accounts or like uh, tax related, so, uh, maybe like t invoice sc uh, receipt scanning on things like that. Um, mm -hmm. The search results show you the screenshots as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, making sure that some of the key value propositions are readable uh, is going to be quite important. Um, I think also we're going on to screenshots uh, three and four, um, there is the gray space around the device, uh, and then the captions are again, they're, they're, I would say, on the medium to lower end on, in terms of size. I think. Uh, I like to often talk about the use of space, uh, and I feel like that screenshots three and four could be using the space a bit better, um, either showing the interface a bit more or using the captions slightly bigger to highlight any key value propositions. Uh, right now, it, it really feels like the gray is standing out to me as opposed to the screenshots as the the user interface or the captions if that makes sense so again how does it look from a, a user's perspective where's the information highlighted or where is it lost um so again i think that's an area to potentially look into also just once we're on screenshots uh, i think anna uses up uses five out of the 10 screenshots um and um, I, I sound like a broken record at this point, but again, there is there are five more slots of opportunity to uh, talk about the app and why it should be used by the user. Um, so again, um, using the additional five remaining screenshots to uh, highlight the key value propositions um, would be useful. Um. Partly agree, actually, but um, I suppose, like, I, I, I usually recommend to uh, keep an eye on the first three screenshots um, the most, and then uh, if you have uh, resources to make uh, the other ones. So this is something uh, that our opinions are a little bit uh, different, but, uh, like, both both of them are, um, like, May may, uh, may be right. Um, like, one thing I want to uh, also uh, say is that the duplication keywords in the app store in the app name and subtitle is something that you should better avoid because if in google play this uh, keyword spam tactic uh, can work and it, it's actually work because like the more you use um, each keyword particularly the more chances and um, the higher ranks you potentially may have but in app store it's enough to 
uh, use the keyword only once and it will index with all keywords that are used here. So for example, if you um, save this business uh, keyword in the app name, it will be influenced on this, um, for example, um, in the subtitle it, uh, it will uh, match with the banking keyword as well. So to um, make and to use your uh, fields as app name and subtitle more wisely, uh, it's better to avoid this duplication. And it, it is also connected to the keyword field. As soon as we cannot see the, the keywords that you use uh, inside your apps, um, if there are some words that's also um, duplicating here with app store, or app name and subtitle, it's better to save space and use some different keywords, which also may um, be relevant for your application. This is also a, a small suggest uh, for like in terms of the text optimization. Rish, um, do you want to say something more uh, probably regarding the um, the rating? Actually, we see that uh, you guys answering on the reviews, um, which actually are featured here. And this is a nice tactic. We'll all already uh, speak about this. That's this is important thing. Rish, you want something to add uh, regarding this application? I mean, uh, overall, I, I know the finance category is a very competitive category. Um, there's some very, there, there, there are different types of apps in the finance space, all the way from your traditional banks, which in mm -hmm. the UK, they tend to dominate. You've got like the likes of PayPal even sitting in finance. Um, so you've got very big apps and then you've got your smaller niche players like Anna mm -hmm. and, and other sort of money management and budgeting apps. So, um, it, so in, uh, with regards to Miriam's uh, message there, how would we get better ranking? I think this is, this is going to be, I've had this question a lot of times in the finance category, and I think it's a, through a process of um, regular keyword optimization. Um, uh, I can see that the app does get updated regularly, which is great. And I think it's just using sort of your titles, your subtitles, and your backend keywords, and, and, and looking to expand on the number of keywords that you rank for. Um, I think right now, you, the app is fairly well optimized. I mean, you, there are some very good keywords in both the title and the subtitle. I, I can't see the backend keywords, but I'm sure there are equally good keywords implemented there. Um, the ratings and reviews are strong. Um, and I think uh, there, it's just over time, it's using uh, an ASO platform, if you have one, to your advantage to understand, okay, which keywords are the ones that are going to drive us traffic, which keywords do we rank for highly, uh, and we need to continue to push. And it's about slowly expanding that prioritized list of keywords that you want to rank for. Um, and unfortunately, with ASO, it's not there is no silver bullet. There's no one shot solution. And uh, when it comes to keywords, it's constant iterations and, and I guess tracking the performance of rankings and optimizing that uh, those keywords that you rank for. All the while, whilst improving on your conversion rate, um, so those will be things like your um, your icons and your, um, your screenshots and uh, maybe even your app store videos, um, which can help with the conversion. Um, mm -hmm. But I think I think Anna's doing a lot of things well, um, just looking at the app store listing. Yeah, there there are always some points uh, how you can uh, improve your performance, but uh, definitely there is no silver bullet uh, for all the applications how to do this, and no universal st strategy, unfortunately. Um, so guys, we are a bit uh, running out of time. So I guess this was the last application that we can review this. And I saw that there, there are some requests in the chat also. So um, like we have, uh, this is not our, the last session. So, so we will definitely uh, have them regularly on a constant basis. So if you have any questions or you want some insights for your application particularly, please feel free to ask Rish, uh, either me in the like LinkedIn, Facebook, or even in, uh, in the email. We're all glad to share our experience with you. And uh, this session is recorded. So if you're interested in like to uh, watch it uh, one more time, you definitely can do it. We will post it in the YouTube. And uh, I think the follow up will uh, come in, in the email. So um thank all of you guys for, for for joining us today and i hope this uh that, like we make some insights for you Rish? thanks everyone thank you yeah no absolutely feel free to reach out anytime 
and um, thank you for having us. Sure, happy happy that we uh, host this session um, together, guys. Uh, then have a good day, have a good evening. Uh, we'll see you probably in a month or or or, or somewhere. Bye. Bye bye.